Hello and welcome to my little video on sort of overview of developing a Sugi tool. So here is my Sugi site and um, if you look at the developer documentation you will see that I have Sugi API documentation. I've already got that opened in a tab. Uh, this, doc this page will get better over time. Um, the video I'm recording will be on this page soon. So uh, so just expect this to grow and improve, and this video is a good start. So this is the API documentation that's built from the nightly uh, every 30 minutes. And this uh, shows some of the uh, APIs. I use the, the PHP Framework Interoperability Group's rules for naming so that I can comply with uh, uh, class loading, auto loading classes. I don't do auto loading classes yet, but I've, I've used the namespaces and that kind of stuff. Uh, the way that I'm supposed to do that. So if we look at these namespaces, uh, the config, that's for uh, the configuration. There's really only one class in that. Uh, core and util are sort of the basic uh, capabilities. Um, util is um, what I call unopinionated classes, where they uh, they don't have an opinion. This LTI code, this net code, and PDOX code literally could be done in kind of any application, not just my application. And so the, you could pull these across. This is generic LTI class, this is generic network communication class, and this is a generic improvement to PDO. Um, and so the uh, the core stuff, this is sort of the essence of LTI of the of the UI, uh, cache, context, link, and user are the key things that capture the LTI. Uh, settings is a wrapper for the settings interface. It works with LTI one or LTI two, and LTI X is an opinionated version of LTI. It has things that have to do with databases. It makes database tables. So this is kind of the tool we use uh, more than LTI. I mean, this this LTIX class calls the LTI class or extends the LTI class. And so if I go back up to Sugi, um, there is also user interface, the output settings form, CRUD form, and tables so that we can have some standard ways of generating markup. Uh, there, I use a API patterns to do this and uh, I won't cover much of this except output so if you look at output there's all kinds of things like when to start the body how to start the footer how to end the footer etc etc and how to print the header various things so uh, I'll be coming back to this as I uh, go through it so let's take a look at the application that we're going to play with um, we're going to go into developer mode and you have to unlock it at least once per session and uh, and the tool that I'm going to play with is the attendance tool. And so the way the attendance tool works is there's a code. Uh, the teacher enters a code and then updates the code. And then when the students log in, they don't see the code. If they put in the wrong code, they're fine. They're not fine. If they put in the right code, they are fine. Uh, and then I can put log in as Ed and put in the right code. And so Ed's been logged. And then if I watch the teacher, the teacher can take a look at what's going on, clear the data, and now the data goes away, update the code, and away you go. So you kind of see the basic uh, thing that's going on here. Um, so I'm going to, uh, to actually step back. So this data is all in this attend table. Uh, the Sugi tables have a whole bunch of things like uh, these LTI underscore tables, they capture all the LTI data as we're launched. And, um, and then uh, each of the tools has their own tables. And the attendance table only has, uh, you know, the address, the user that did it, the, the link that we're coming from. And it, it might be a good idea to, to talk a little bit more about the context, the link, and the user. And these things also show up in the Tsugi core as the context class, the link class, and the user. Core link. So there's a link ID. Now this link ID is different than the link ID coming from the LMS. This is unique with across all of a, all of a Tsugi instance. And so if you look at these things in say a learning management system. Uh, each course is a context, a unique context ID. Then within each course, there's many links. This and this happens to be in my uh, PHP class. That's a LTI link. That's one link. 
This is another LTI link that's a, not, a different distinct link. So what you find is there is one context, many links, and then for each many link, many users. So if I take a look at the data here in the attend, it's got a foreign key per link to keep, keep all the data in a link uh, nice and um, siloed. And then we, we record the use the current logged in user of the person who is entering the code and when they attended in their IP address. So that's that's this. But I want but the first thing I want to show you before I go much farther is I'm going to take a look at all the tables here and just show you something. I'm going to whack this table. Whack the table. Now, if I was to just rerun this, well, let's rerun it. It's going to blow up because there is no table. Table doesn't exist. So, so let me show you a, a bit of code. So I'm in my Sugi directory, and this code lives in mod attend. And the database.php is a set of migrations. It's, it's kind of uh, really trying to be a very thin Rails-like environment. There's no modeling going on here, but there is the notion of increasing and decreasing versions, and I won't go into that. Right now, this is really just to get the thing started. There's a script to uninstall the database to drop the table, and then there is a, a script, an array, that has in each entry the table that needs to be created, and then the SQL that needs to be created. And there's this database prefix that allows us to prefix the tables uh, in the config option in case you only can do one database on your server. It's probably better not to do one database and all the tables that I'm using don't have prefixes otherwise they might be T underscore key request, T underscore LMS plugins, yada yada. And so what happens is if you go in and you go into admin mode now you have to have the unlock key. I hope this is still short. Yeah. So if that database table doesn't exist, you do this upgrade database, which triggers all of the migrations that need to happen. And it looks at all the tables, it looks at all the database.php files throughout all of Sugi, and it decides, oh, we're missing something. We're missing a table called attend, and I have the commands to do this. And it runs those commands, and then if I come back here, and I hit refresh, mm -hmm. and I look at the tables, then there is now an attend table, and it is the proper uh, SQL structure. There's no data in it. But now when I come back here and I close the upgrade thing, I go here and I go back into developer mode and I go back to the attendance tool, it will start working because the table is there. And so that I'll go into more detail in other documents, but the notion that there's this database.php file that captures the tables and the structure that need to be created in more complex situations, over time, these tables also evolve, and there's mechanisms in here to allow you to evolve the tables over time. And um, But basically, this is how they're created. Uh, I won't cover this in much more detail, but that's how the table gets created. So if we take a look, I'll, I'll cover in another lecture the locale and how that works and how internationalization works. There is some online documentation for that, um, and, and so I'm... Uh, I could I could use some help at times in improving that, but this one does can, has several languages. So let's take a look at the index.php because that is where uh, the rubber meets the road. Okay, and so so this top part right here, this part right here, these first three lines, um, you know, the first one is very Moodle-like in that there's a configuration, it defines a variable called dollar $CFG and does some some basic setup that every every script needs. Uh, if you need a database connection, which we're going to, you include the dir root, so that dir root is set in config.php, and then a bunch of library routines, and that includes all the classes. Tons of stuff get included by this. Pretty much, that's all. Most all you ever need is all from this lms.php. And uh, like, like I said, we use the uh, PHP fig. Um, we use the mm -hmm. PHP fig recommendations. And uh, and so we have use statements, and uh, we're going to use the settings and the LTIX, and then we come down, and and 
this this statement here, this required data with an array of strings, um, is the basic way that you'd set up or check the session details. And you're basically saying the rest of this code really can't function unless I have a distinct user, a distinct link, a distinct role, and a context ID, which means I need a course, a link within course, a, a user's role within the, within of this launched user, and and a user. This isn't a lot of lot of data. It's pretty much the minimum that you could expect. Uh, you might not get a link ID if it were a context-wide launch, and so we're just basically saying this tool needs to be on a link. Um, and then we call the settings code, and what we're doing is there's actually link, context, and and uh, key level settings, but the ones that are most commonly used are the links. And so these, so these are, if you look at this in C tools, this is a set of settings that is that is distinct to each link. So this is one set of settings, this is another set of settings, and what we're going to do in this code is we're going to use the settings to store that code. We can make a table to do that, but we're just going to use the settings because they're already there and they, they get automatically pre-populated and preloaded by this required data. So this is a very, this doesn't, there's even no, there's not even any SQL uh, calls in this, but we just say, give me the old code, I'm going to take it out of settings, and if it's not there, give me uh, empty string. And then what we see is a pattern that is sort of my model view controller pattern. And I'm a firm believer in keeping things really simple and making it so that the, the, the developer can see everything that's going on. And so I have sort of the model code, maybe controller code, model controller code. There, I call it the silent code. It's the part of code that emits no output handles the incoming post data. If there's no post data, it often does absolutely nothing except sort of preloads all the data. And so so that's the code to deal with all the post data. And then at some point, I draw a line. I draw a line when I, in this model view controller, it says above that line is all sort of silent code that might do redirects, might do who knows what. And then at some point, the view starts down here, right? So there'll be no handling of post data down here. There'll be no um, redirects down here. If that's going to happen, it happens up here. And so, you know, other other patterns will put this in a separate file, have like a templates directory, but I'm going to keep this exceedingly simple and put it all in one directory. So once we pass this line, once we pass this line, we're basically in the main code of the body. And so now we're using this predefined output variable that says emit the header, start the body. Flash messages are those little green messages that were popping up that said code updated, attendance updated. Okay. And so now we're just sort of emitting some HTML. We're going to put out a form. Now this is the pattern for internationalization that basically says um, underscore and then we put the English and then that turns into lookups and it uses all the internationalization capabilities uh, that are commonly used in PHP and uh, and so we print that out and then we then we ask the dollar user object are you an instructor very Moodle like if we are we put out the form to set the code otherwise we put the form to enter the code and then if the user is the instructor we do a this is using my um, PDO X it's a value add on top of PDO that kinda takes four lines of PDO and turns them into one and makes the error handling a lot simpler um, because PDO is really easy to use but to catch all the different errors in all the different situations is actually very 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 painful so I've got a series of utility class code in this PDOX class let's go take a look at that that is in util because it's actually usable other places and so it's uh, it's, it's basically, um, it, it's got just a couple of methods that wrap common PDO stuff. Query return error does most of it, and it has to do with how there's two steps in PDO, and it fakes both steps, and it just makes it so I can write it in a very, very few lines of code. So my goal is, is not to hide from the user the SQL that's being run, you know, but to then not have four and five line sequences that are necessary and repetitive so that error checking is really easy um, and I have all these things where it dies now that doesn't seem as it just means it dies if there's a syntax error and you should not have syntax errors in the SQL that you have in your PHP 
So what this does is it reads through these rows and then it prints them out and that's what actually makes the table. Then I'll put the footer and then that's it. That's all there is. So that's the view. And so at some point there's either a get request, which means all this silent code up here in the model is ignored, or if it's a post request, then I have to do with various set it, set it, sets of things. And so if it's a post request, I check to see is the user the instructor? Are we trying to set the code? If we are, we call a settings thing uh, to set the code from the post statement, and we put out a flash message, and then we add session. Now, add session is necessary because we may are likely to be using cookie-less sessions, uh, so we have to read it. When we redirect, we add sessions. Um, the cookie-less sessions don't cause a problem. Oops. The cookie list sessions aren't a problem for things like forms because um, PHP knows where cookie lists and then adds session ID as hidden field to the forms. But for things like uh, AJAX or for uh, redirects, we have to add the session manually. And so we have an add session utility. So if I take a look again at this code up here, right? so this code is store the code in the settings set the flash message and redirect to index, and now we're done. If the instructor has asked to clear the data, we verify their instructor, of course, and then we do a delete, and we have a where clause that's looking at the link ID. And again, that just keeps, if you know, if I had in CTools, I clear this one, it doesn't bleed over into that. And that keeps the data for, when you have a, bit of, uh, a bunch of rows, and you have them indexed by link ID, you're basically guaranteed that all data for this link is maintained separate and distinct from that link. And it's also, it implies a course, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, so one of the bigger things to do is to make your data, for sort of security, to make your data have link ID as one of the things, and then just where clause the link ID, and that quickly reduces to only the data that applies to this particular link. Link within course, within tenant, etc. So link ID is nice, nice, nice. And so that's why I just say delete from where link ID equals. And then I pull out link ID from that global variable and away we go. And then we set the we set the um, flash data and then we redirect again. And this is the student code. And so the student code is pretty simple. If uh, we check to see if the uh, Old, old code is the same as the post code, which means the student somehow has gotten the right code. Uh, we insert into the uh, database with a duplicate key update. Allows the student to do it over and over again, right, on duplicate key. And again, this there's really two parameters to this PDO query die. And then there is the actually array that ma matches the little PDO hooks with their actual data. And we pull out of link ID and user ID. And that stuff is all pre-done. And then we set the flash message, or if something goes wrong, we set the error flash message, and then we redirect. And so that's pretty much all the code, right? And so we can test that really easy. So clear data, that hit that post data, deleted all the records from the database that matched link, set the flash message and redirected, and then in the get request, the flash was shown. The flash is shown by this output flash messages and of course just like all flash mess flash messages it's cleared and that we can update the code and you get the picture so i hope that was helpful i hope that kind of gives you a picture this attend this attend code is a good code to look at and look through and understand before you move on to more complex things the peer grading code is probably the most complex code that's in there and the attend is not the simplest, but it's probably the, the simplest, somewhat complete tool. Okay? So thanks a lot. I hope that this uh, developing Sugi's tools has been helpful to you. Cheers.